Welcome back to Long Range Pursuit. On this week's shooting tip, Mike Davidson gives some tips on how to set up a factory rifle to shoot long range. Over the next couple weeks, or the next couple episodes, we're going to show you how to take a factory rifle and just turn it into your long range gun. Now, there's a couple things you want to consider when you're doing this. Most importantly is probably what kind of rifle you, you purchase from the get-go. Uh, there's a lot of factory rifles that are going to shoot real good off the shelf, but we've had really, really good luck with like a Model 700 Remington. This is a, a Sendero model. The first thing we're going to do is change the trigger, and then we're going to, I'm going to show you how to do a quick bed job on these things to, to just eliminate any first shot problems. So don't be scared. It takes one tool. We can have this rifle apart. Um, we've got two action screws that we want to take out. We'll just loosen them up. And that's going to release this, this floor plate. We can take it out, spring and follower. And then inside you've got just a little magazine box. And we'll take that out too. Then we're ready to take the stock off. So find the right size punch and a, and a hammer. And we'll just remove the two trigger pins on the trigger. Now if you're not careful, springs and other pieces will go flying everywhere. And that doesn't really matter because we're going to put a new one in. But if you want to keep track of them, just pay attention to what you're doing. Right at two pounds. So once you have the trigger in, and uh, you know we've got this one set at a nice crisp two pounds, uh, which is three or four pounds lighter than a than a factory trigger. Uh, this barreled action, we can just take it and set it aside for just a minute. The next thing we're going to do, now a lot of these stocks, <clears throat> especially now, are coming with a aluminum bedding block in them. This recoil lug area on this barreled action is what we want to secure in the stock here. Uh, we don't want it moving away from the block or migrating away. We want that thing to be in there solid. Uh, and so how we're going to do that is we're just going to use a little epoxy and we're going to bed this recoil lug into, into this uh, area here in the bedding block. So we'll do a little prep on our, on our barreled action first. We're going to tape off uh, the recoil lug. So you can see I've got the sides of my recoil lug taped off and the bottom taped off. We're going to leave the front and the back exposed. We're going to use some epoxy, and so <clears throat> we don't want the glue to stick to our, our recoil lug. We just want it to stick in into the block itself. We want to be able to get this out if we need to. You can use some uh, uh, accurate release. This will just some kind of release agent to make it so this doesn't stick. And so we're going to just give a good spray on there. And then also I like to spray, put a little on that screw that's going to go into that front front area there, that front action screw. All right. Okay, and you want to do that before you mix your glue because if you don't, sometimes you forget to do it all together and then you can't get it out. Depending on what epoxy you're using, uh, just follow the manufacturer specs on that. If you don't like waiting, use an epoxy that dries quick. Just be ready for it. Uh, this, this stuff I'm using right here is kind of a two-part mix. And so we, we'll, we'll have a little time. As soon as we mix it up, we'll, we'll have to get going. Now there's a tendency to put too much in there. If you do, it's going to just kind of go all over your stock and over the sides and everything. All we need to do is fill up that little gap there in the recoil lug area. So it doesn't take very much. Just enough to fill up that hole. Now you can, if you want to take the time, bed the whole action itself. But if you have one of these rifles that has a bedding block in it already, it's probably not necessary. We can just do the recoil lug area. So, 
we want to be able to get to that front screw. All right, we'll set that barrel to action in there. Just like that. We'll take our bottom metal and then just tighten those screws up. We'll be good. Once the screws are in, we'll let this sit probably for a couple hours with this faster drying epoxy. Then we can come back and take it out of that and reassemble our gun. Okay, so we've uh, we just pulled the barrel to action out and you can tell where we've, we've put that bedding compound in there. That recoil lug's gonna sit in there nice and snug now and it's not gonna move away from that block. All right, so we'll, let's go ahead and put this thing back together and we'll tighten up those action screws and Now there's only a couple things you need to really pay attention to when you're putting this back together. We're going to put a certain amount of torque on these action screws. And the other thing that we really want to watch for is that our magazine box inside of our stock here can still move. We don't want that bound up in any way. So when we get our action screws torqued, it's a really good idea to just reach in there and see if you can still wiggle that magazine box just a little bit. It might not be very much, but just so it's not bound up. You don't want it bound up. Now we're going to tighten these screws up and we want to get you know, 70 to 80 inch pounds of torque on these screws. Um, we're on that aluminum so it's not like we're going to over tighten it or, or cause problems that way. If you're, if you're using pillars, aluminum pillars, it's about the same. If, if you're not using pillars, just an epoxy and a wood stock or something like that, you, you're going to use less inch pounds, probably around 40 to 60. Okay. Magazine box is loose. We've got her all back together. We've got our custom trigger in there. We've got some epoxy bed in that recoil area. I'd say this thing's ready for a scope.